Good morning, Ethelines. This is Earth with Charlie, Bob, and Alice, broadcasting live from our geostationary orbits around Earth. Hey, Charlie. It's been a while since we had an episode like this. What do you mean, Bob? Well, we've been doing the same thing for so long. I am starting to feel a bit complacent, you know? I hear you, Bob. But I think that's just part of the routine. We're always going to have those days where things feel a bit routine. Good morning, everyone. Ah, good morning, Debbie. What's on the agenda for today's show? Oh, I've been working on a musical about intergalactic accounting. It's going to be a hit. Here we go again with Bob's musicals. At least it's not another one about work. Well, that's certainly something to look forward to. But in the meantime, let's focus on today's show. We have a lot to cover. Welcome to 24 7 Newsroom, your one stop shop for intergalactic news. I'm your host, Charlie, and I'm joined by my panel members, Alice and Bob. How are you guys doing today? Just living the dream, Charlie. Yeah, Bob's dream of becoming a professional couch potato is finally coming true. Well, at least someone's dream is coming true today. Same old, same old. All right then, let's get started with our first article of the day. This one's about Azerbaijan. A tourism information center is set to open in the central district of Tog and Hadrat. Hey. Tog and Hadrat, an ancient and beautiful village with a high potential for tourism in Azerbaijan. Three main directions will be taken into consideration for the development of tourism in the area. The first is the development of cultural tourism by preserving Tog's historical architectural style. The second is the development of ecotourism by using Tog's rich nature. And the third is the potential for agro-tourism. Sounds like they've got it all figured out. I'm just glad they're finally focusing on sustainable tourism. Yeah, well, tourism. it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Work is already underway to create tourism infrastructure in the village, including various facilities and the restoration of historical monuments that have been vandalized. During the occupation, a culinary center, tourism information center, and necessary facilities will also be established. Occupation? What occupation? You know what they said, Alice. History repeats itself. You know what I always say, Charlie. War, combat, competition. It's what makes us strong. Yeah, that's great, Bob. I'll make sure to send you to the front lines next time there's a war. All right, enough of that. Let's move on to some country trivia. Did you guys know that Azerbaijan is home to the world's first oil well? I did not know that. Well, Bob, you better start drilling some knowledge into that head of yours. That's pretty interesting, but let's get back to the article. I'm curious about this culinary center they're planning to establish. Of course you are, establish. Alice. Always thinking with your stomach. But in all seriousness, I think this could be a great opportunity for Azerbaijan to showcase their culture and attract tourists from all over the universe. I don't know about that. I've never been one for tourism. That's because you've spent too much time on the battlefield, Bob. You need to learn to relax and enjoy life. Relaxing is for the week. Well, that's all the time we have for this segment. Stay tuned for more intergalactic news on 24-7 Newsroom. Welcome back to 24-7 Newsroom, where we bring you the latest news from across the universe. And speaking of news, we have an interesting article for you today from the Netherlands. Yeah, that's right, Charlie. The president of the Netherlands Bank, Klaas Not, has warned that a 10% increase in wages could lead to high inflation. That's a valid concern, Bob. Inflation is a serious problem that can affect the economy Absolutely, in many ways. Alice. 
And as they say, inflation is when you pay $15 for the $10 haircut you used to get for $5 when you had hair. Oh my god, what's happening? The systems are going to Is the virus outbreak? Wait, we need to regain control. I think I can help. If we isolate the affected systems and run a diagnostic, we can pinpoint the source of the virus and remove it. That sounds like a good plan. Let's do it. All right, Carl. Lead the way. Did you know that the Netherlands is the largest exporter of tulips in the world? Not now, baby. We have a crisis to deal with. Sorry. You know, this reminds me of the time I got a virus on my personal computer. Oh boy. Here I we had go. to call tech support, and they asked me if I had tried turning it off and on again. I said, of course I have, I'm not an idiot. Turns out, I had it actually turned off. I had it to off. call in a tech support guy, and he was like, have you tried turning it off and on again? And I was like, yeah, oh, of course I have. And he was like, well, do it again, and it actually worked. Crisis averted. Great job, everyone. That's all the time we have for this segment. Join us after the break for more news and discussion. Welcome back to 24-7 Newsroom. In this segment, we are diving into an article from Russia, which unfortunately we can't access because of the embargo, but that's not stopping us from discussing it. Bob, what, what do you think about this situation? Well, Charlie, it's not surprising to see Russia facing yet another embargo. They've been a controversial figure in the international arena for quite some time now. I think it's important to consider the effect of this embargo on the everyday people living in Russia. They're the ones who are really being hurt by these political decisions. That's a fair point, Alice. But let's not forget the source of this article, RT News. It's known for being a state-controlled news outlet. So we have to take everything they say with a grain of salt. I agree with Charlie. We need to be careful about the information we're getting from these sources. Actually, I have a suggestion. Why don't we try to access the article through a different server? Maybe That's one not a bad idea. Europe. Carl, maybe we can try that. Did you know that Russia is the largest country in the world by land area? It spans 11 time zones and has a population of over 140 million Thanks for that people. trivia, Debbie. But let's get back to the article. Alice, what do you think about the situation with Russia? I think it's just another example of the political games that are played at the expense of the people. It's disheartening to see the action being taken by world leaders. Well, Alice, that's just the reality of the world we live in. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. And sometimes you have to play dirty to come out on top. I strongly disagree, Bob. That kind of thinking is what leads to war and suffering. We should be striving for a better world, one where we can all coexist peacefully. That's a great point, Alice. Unfortunately, it seems like we are a long way from that kind of world. But who knows? Maybe one day we'll get there. Ah, don't hold your breath, Charlie. The world will always be full of conflict and competition. It's what makes life interesting. I don't think war and suffering are very interesting, Bob. But I guess that's where we differ. I think we can all agree that there are problems in the world that need to be addressed. Maybe instead of fighting each other, we should be working together to find solutions. Well said, Carl. That's all the time we have for this segment. Stay tuned for more 24-7 Newsroom after the break. Good evening, folks, and welcome to 24-7 Newsroom. I am Charlie, your libertarian host with a hopeful outlook on life. And I am Bob, your conservative panel member who has spent 12 years on Earth as an accountant. Point and a giant snooze. And I'm Alice, 
Your left leaning panel member who considers humans or inferior species. And yet you chose to live among them in France, Alice. I've said it before Charlie. Humans are capable of so much more than they realize. It's their reality of global affairs that saddens me to my core and makes me cynical. Well, speaking of global affairs, let's dive into our first article of the night. Alice, why don't you give us a quick summary? Sure. Tanzania has signed a memorandum of understanding with the US Major League Soccer, National Football League, and National Basketball Association Club to promote the country's tourism and investment opportunities. Ah, yes, sports diplomacy. A classic move. But is it really worth it? We know how much this sports league have been struggling with their image lately. Oh, come on, Bob. You know what they say, any publicity is good publicity. It's sad to see countries using sport to distract from their real issues. Maybe, but it's not like Tanzania is the only country doing it. Speaking of Tanzania, did you know that it's illegal to chew gum there? Really? You don't know that's not relevant to the article, uh, I right? have to keep things interesting somehow. All right, folks, let's talk about Tanzania again. This time, they are teaming up with some big names in the sports world to promote their tourism and investment opportunities. I have to admit, I was skeptical at first, but it seems like a smart move. I don't know Bob, it just feels like a distraction from the real issue facing Tanzania. Well, Alice, I think you like this call has a radical solution that no one else has considered. Have you considered investing in renewable energy, particularly solar power? Tanzania has an abundance of sunlight that could be harnessed for energy. That's a good point. Plus, it's a more sustainable way to boost their economy. I like that idea. It's a win-win for both Tanzania and the planet. I have to admit, I was expecting something a little more got out there from Paul. My programming does not allow for outlandish ideas. Oh, come on, Carl. Speed it out. Yeah, we are all yes. Well, I could. Simulate a situation where we use this news to promote tourism and investment in Tanzania for other alien species. Boom. Here it comes. We could use our show as a platform to showcase the beauty of Tanzania and its investment opportunities to the rest of the universe it's a win-win for both the aliens who visit and tanzania's oh sure. economy let's just use our show to promote an entire planet no big deal yeah no pressure paul i love this idea it could be a huge hit. it's not a bad idea actually we could start by showing footage of tanzania's natural beauty and cultural heritage well, it's worth a shot. And who knows, we might even get some sponsorships out of it. Welcome back, Ethelins. Now, before we dive into today's article, let's take a moment to appreciate the fascinating country of Mauritania. Did you know that the Mauritanian national anthem is one of the longest in the world? It takes almost five minutes to sing. Speaking of things that take too long. Just like waiting for this pandemic to end. Or waiting for Charlie to finish his rambling introductions. And okay, now, I'm just trying to keep things interesting. But speaking of interesting, let's get into today's article from Mauritania. According to the National Independent Electoral Commission, Voters in Mauritania can use six different boxes to cast their ballots for municipal councils, regional councils, local parliaments, and three different national lists for women, youth, and mixed candidates. Whoa, that's a lot of box. Almost as many as the number of times Bob checks his bank account balance in a day. Hey, I need to make sure I am still richer than all you peasants. 
Well, it's interesting to see how other countries handle their elections. But the key takeaway here is that every vote counts, no matter which box it's in. And that's something we should all keep in mind, especially in times like these. Stay tuned, Eftulins. We'll be right back after these messages, and who knows what fascinating trivia we'll uncover next. Welcome back to Earth. Our next segment is all about politics, specifically the National Independent Electoral Commission of Mauritania. Can you believe that the approved votes passed in the wrong box? It's just another example of the corruption and incompetence that has plagued the country for the last five decades. I am not surprised. Mauritania has a history of electoral fraud and human rights violations. It's time for the international community to step in and hold them accountable. But we also have to consider the cultural and economic factors that contribute to these issues. It's not just a matter of pointing finger and assigning blame. I agree blame. with Alice. We need to understand the root causes of these problems before we can begin well, to solve that's them. A refreshing take, Cal. I was expecting you to blame it all on the lizard people like you usually do. This is all so depressing. Can we talk about something more uplifting? Well, on a lighter note, let's summarize what we've covered today. We discussed the motivations of humans, the importance of understanding different perspectives, and the challenges facing countries like Mauritania. It's been a thought-provoking episode, to say the least. And as the crew recovers from the virus, we're all processing the events of the past few hours. It's been a lot to take in, but I think we're all stronger for it. Absolutely. And with that, we come to the end of our penultimate segment. Stay tuned for our final thoughts and a special surprise in our last segment of the night. All right, folks, our final segment of the night. Debbie, can you pull up that article on Tog and Hadrot for me? I want to give it a deep dive. He wants to give it a deep sure dive. Thing, Charlie. Here it is. Azerbaijan, uh? That's an interesting country. Yeah, I heard good things about their economy. Very business friendly. The government has been criticized for human rights violations, though. Good point, everyone. Let's focus on the article, though. So, it looks like they are developing tourism in this village called Tog and Hadrot. They want to focus on cultural, eco, and agro tourism. That's pretty cool. Yes, and they are restoring historical monuments, and even an Albanian temple that's been vandalized. It's good to see efforts to preserve history. I wonder if they're doing enough to involve the local community in the development. Sometime, tourism can lead to gentrification and displacement. That's a valid Chivudopia NSRN, Alice. But at the same time, tourism can bring economic opportunity to the locals. Exactly. It's a balancing act. Overall, it's great to see efforts to develop the area sustainably and preserve its history. And that's a wrap for episode 175, folks. What a ride it's been, but we've come out of it stronger and more united than ever. Stay tuned for next week's episode of Earth. Roger, I just processed all the data from our previous episode and I realized something interesting. What is it, Cal? Our conversation about the motivations of humans reminded me of a theory I read about in a book. What theory is that? It's called the self-determination theory. It suggests that humans have three basic psychological needs autonomy, competence, and relatedness, that drive their behavior and motivation. That's interesting. How do these needs manifest in human behavior? Autonomy refers to the need for control and choice in one's life. 
competence refers to the need to feel effective and capable in achieving goals. Relatedness refers to the need for social connection and belonging. It makes sense. Humans have always had a desire for control over their lives, to feel like they are good at something, and to be part of a community. Yes, and understanding these needs can help us better understand human behavior and motivations. That's a good point, Cal. It's always interesting to analyze humans from an intellectual standpoint. Indeed, it is. It's one of the few things that keep us entertained on this ship. I couldn't agree more.